What's up, people? Welcome back. Right, I've been doing a little bit of work on the Black Mini. Just messing around, getting it to roll a bit easier. And now I've stole the seat out of it. I'm trying this. So I can get a sort of seating position. And I've stole the steering column out of it so I can get a sort of steering column position. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the jig out. Because the seat needs to move a bit further back. And it's in the way of where the column needs to be. Yeah, so that's what I've got to do first of all. And plus, we've had a quick delivery on a some nice coil over story. These are the back ones, some ProTech custom made to what I the lengths I wanted and the poundage. So, we've got these as well to sort out soon. So, it's all go at the minute. Right, let's uh, let's get this uh, chassis jig out, shall we? Rock on. Right, people, knocked up this little doofa doofa thingy for the rear shock to mount to. And we've got this little installation tool. So, this is a half inch UNF, which is half inch by 20 pitch. And we're going to get it in there. So, cameraman dad can take over with that. With the glove shall we? No, and a mallet. <laughs> I think I might need a bigger money, what do you reckon? There we go. Beautiful. <clears throat> Job done. Superb. It's nice. So you got a nice little fit. Nice and square. Beautiful job. <coughs> right, just got one on the other side of it now. What's up, people? Welcome back. We are back in the garage yet again to do a little bit more work on the chassis. So it's been a, a week or so now because I've been a bit ill. So I thought I'd catch up to where we are now. So, as you've seen, uh, the jig's out now. We've put the rear top shock mount things, bungs, things in the back. So the back shocks are there. Shut the door on me fire. It's going to be warm. So here we are. This is what we're at now. Right, so we've skipped ahead slightly since you've last seen him. So these are in and on. Look quite trick, quite happy with them, they're both on. We've got a rear diagonal fitted. Now this is, it's an easy bar to make. This one, this one, this one, and the roof bar. These are really easy. So what I'll do, what you want to do, people, is you want to go to... Wilkinson's of all places or Wilco and you want to get one of these it's an aluminium ruler yeah and it's only a couple of quid it's not a lot of dough and this will become your friend when it comes 
to measuring for your bars, right? So I'll show you, shall I? So if I, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm gonna swap tripods, back in a minute. Right, we're back. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you on the front screen, because it's basically the same. Just imagine this bar is dead straight. So what you've got is these two bars running parallel with each other, which is what makes it so easy. Because the notches are the same. If you get this ruler and you put it there and there, you can work out your length of tube because you need it from this corner to the opposite side on that end. And that's your length of tube. So it'll be from there to that corner. So that's how I measure the tube. Exactly the same on the back, all I did was put it there. And you're taking your furthest corner to your furthest corner. That's your length of your tube. And then all you do, so you've got this here, you know your length now, and you will take your angle from here. And that angle should be the same both ends. So you'll take your angle, that's the angle you need to notch. So you'll notch the one, come down, drop it in, rotate it around, give it a check, make sure it looks right. Then you can mark your inside, and then you can see your angle of this one, and notch that. These rulers are really helpful for only a few quid. Yeah, so that bar is, it is, it's an easy bar. Let me take you around the back, show you. So this bar, it's got the same notch, top and bottom, because this bar runs parallel with this bar. So notch, notch. Easy, and you'll just find your angle out by using the thing on your ruler. Yeah. Now these bars are pretty much what I I like to use. They're just straight bars, ninety degree notch, and then this is just like a V notch down here. It's just a V notch. And they just slide in. I'm not sure what I'm going to do in the middle yet, because this is supposed to be a semi-Maguire looking car. Yeah. The Maguires had an X in the back, but it was in box section. And normally I run a bar from here to there or in the middle. But I'm tempted, I might put an X in. Or is it just overkill? And do I really need it? It car doesn't need it, it's well strong enough. Yeah, so that's something to think about. I'll have a chat with the uh, the owner, see what he wants to do. And in my roof bar, it's a piece of piss. really is. It's about 1,070 long. I've got a 30 degree bend on that end, coming down onto the main hoop, or the windscreen bar. And six inches from the end, I've got a 15 degree. So this notch is square, because this is square. And that notch is square. From the top of this box section to the bottom of this tube, I think was 950. Yeah, but 950 at the front. 955 at the rear. Yeah. And that should give you room clearance. It will be close to your roof, but that's giving you maximum clearance there. So that now isn't much more left to go on here. I'm going to put some bars from here to here, yeah, just to tie that up a bit more. Um, I need to figure out what I want to do in there. We've got the floor bars for the seats in. Uh, the chap wanted these three instead of the hoops for the exhaust tunnel. Because I think he's decided, he's not sure whether he's going to run it across there. Or whether he's going to run it down the middle. So... Yeah, so now what we've got to do, we've got to get this out of the way again. And I've got an engine off me, mate. So I can put the engine in the subframe. And there's a subframe. And we'll get onto that now, because I've made some changes again. Right, let's crack on, shall we?
Right then, back at you. Tell you what, them benders are heavy. But note for you, if using these benders, just before you use it, polish this, and then get some WD-40 on a rag, and just give it a little of nice polish with WD, and it helps the tube slide. So it just makes it so much easier, but you get less marking, and you don't want to damage your dies because they're expensive. Right then, so, that's what I'm going to show you now. Right, so we've got the front subframe. These holes weren't here. And do you remember you saw me make this? Yeah? From there. 1.5mm wall, I thought, yep, yeah, that'll be sound. Well, it bugged the shit out of me. So, what I did with this is I took it off. And I stuck it down there for spares for later. And we made a new one. And a 3mm wall. Yeah? So it's much stronger. And we've got our same plates on, but these are slightly wider than the ones I had on that one. Because I wasn't happy with that either. So these are wider. It's got the sides on it that we were talking about. And it's got a centre one on it that we were talking about. Now that is a lot stronger. So... We took all this off because we've got these. These are proper captive nuts that you weld on. These aren't just normal nuts that you weld on. And I machined all of these down on the back. Because let me show you what they are originally like. Let me get one out. They're like that look. Because they are meant to be welded onto tube. Yeah? So they are shaped tube. We didn't want them on tube. So I've machined them down. All of these are going to have captive nut welded on the back. Every one of these. And there's four here. And there's one in the centre of the back here. So that's our first one, people. We've got to flip it over. And then I really need to finish this off. Right, so that's our first job. So we're going to flip it over. And we're going to get some of these welded on, okay? Right, rock and roll, shall we? Right, and they're the welding on. Clean the back up as well. Just show you. Right. Welding on the both side, but all these before were just to cover the threads. So I don't damage any of the threads. <coughs> and this one. They only need welding on two sides of these things. So now that is get in there, oh you son of a monkey. There you go, sorry about that. So now that is that bit on. Bolted in place, and then I want to get an engine in it. Well, what I'm gonna to have to do is strip some stuff off that engine because the radiator not in the way for what you do on the Maguire's. So, should we bolt the engine in and then put the subframe in place? It'll probably be easier, won't it? So, I can have the subframe here and just drop the engine on. I think that might be the plan, and then move that into place. Then we can put the arms and everything back in, check our drive shaft angle, then we can see whether we've got any issues with basically with the drive shafts being at a dodgy angle, or whether the shocks are going to catch any part of the engine. That's the only reason I want 
wanted the engine really was just to see if it was going to contact anything but most of you people have already got your engine so i had to borrow one it's only a little one liter not too bad it's quite tidy look it's got fan dangly bits i'm going to call it off here now i gotta go in and have some tea and yeah that's a quick update and we'll uh, probably crack on tomorrow-ish maybe Right, thanks for watching people. See you later.